Hey everyone, today on Classic Action Figures, we are going to be taking a look at the 2015 G.I. Joe Silent Strike. This is part 2 of my video review, and on this video we are going to be taking a look at the Sky Striker and the two G.I. Joe figures. Let's take a look at the figures first. The first one is Sightline. Here's a look at his figure stand. It has the character's name, and it has the G.I. Joe logo done in a nice gold metallic finish. And here's a look at his file card. Sightline is a new character that was made by Hasbro in tribute to G.I. Joe fan Gary Goggles Head, who unfortunately passed away. This was a very cool thing for Hasbro to do, and it recognized G.I. Joe fans by paying tribute to one of their own. The actual figure is well done in a nice gray camo pattern. It uses the same body that was used for the G.I. Joe Retaliation Ultimate Duke figure, and it uses the alternate head from that figure as well. The figure has great sculpting, and it's specially notable on the helmet and goggles of the figure, as well as on the vest. The figure is a bit bulky, but it still has pretty good articulation. The head can move side to side, and a little bit up and down. The arms can rotate, and they can also stretch out quite well. He can bend at the elbows about 90 degrees, and he can also rotate at the elbows. His hands rotate at the wrist, and he can also bend them up or down. He can rotate at the chest, and he can also bend a little bit forward and back. He can kick out his legs in front quite far, and also a little bit back. He also has double jointed knees, and his feet can pivot. He also comes with a variety of weapons, such as a small sidearm that can be stored in his holster. He also has a small knife stored on the back of the vest. And his sniper rifle looks fantastic. He's able to hold all of these weapons well, and I'm glad that the knife and the small gun can be stored on the figure. There are also three other accessories that come with this figure. A small laptop that can actually open and close, a small shovel, and a small portable radio that he can actually hold. The small radio does have a peg on it, but I couldn't find anywhere to place it on the character, so that's a bit of a shame. All of these accessories are nicely detailed and are done in a medium gray color, except for the sniper rifle, which also has some light gray touches. The vest on the figure can be removed by taking off the head of the figure and pulling a small tab on the side of the vest. The second figure we have is the Sky Striker Pilot, Ace. Let's take a look at his stand. It also has the character's name and the G.I. Joe logo in gold. Here's a look at the file card as well. Ace has a fantastic sculpt that is really well done. For example, let's look at his helmet, the front and back of the chest, and the straps on his harness. The paint job on him is also very good, and we can see some nice subdued colors on him mainly dark gray and black, but also some red accents on the leg, the chest area, and the helmet. The hardness is removable, similar to how we removed the vest on sightline, so I won't be showing that again on camera. His parachute pack is also removable, and it's a nice detail to include as well. Ace comes with a removable helmet, 
that has a really nice translucent red color. He also has a semi-automatic machine gun and a small sidearm that he can store on his boot holster. Articulation is pretty much the same as in Sightline, but the only difference is that his hands only rotate. Now as far as the Sky Striker is concerned, this is a really awesome jet done in a proper scale for the line. Unlike the original Sky Striker, however, this one only allows you to place one figure in the cockpit. This is probably due to the larger size of the modern era figures. The Sky Striker is based on the F-14 Tomcat plane that was made by the Grumman Aircraft Corporation and saw extensive action in the 1970s, 80s and early 90s. Tomcats were manufactured from 1972 to 2006. It was a deck launched supersonic variable sweep wing fighter. The Sky Striker also has this feature in the toy. By moving the lever back, you can spread the wings and lower the landing gear. By moving a small lever on the top of the vehicle forward, you can sweep the wings back and it also raises the landing gear. It's a great feature that was found on the original Sky Striker and it works remarkably well here as well. The Sky Striker is done in a nice dark gunmetal gray. It almost feels like a stealth fighter in this regard. The canopy has a red tone and it looks great, but unfortunately it doesn't quite close well enough. This is the only drawback I found on the toy. Everything else is top notch. The jet comes with a variety of weapons, including two AIM-9 short-range air-to-air missiles. These are also called Sidewinder missiles, located underneath the cockpit. It also has two AIM-7 medium-range air-to-air missiles. These are also called Sparrows, located just underneath the main body. And finally, it has two AIM-54 long-range air-to-air missiles. These are also called Phoenix missiles, that are towards the center of the vehicle, but just before the wing sweep. All these missiles are done in a gray color, and they stay fixed on the jet quite well, but can be removed to pretend being launched. There is also a fuel tank that is removable, located in the middle of the jet, and it is done in the same gray color as the missiles. The actual toy measures 22 and a half inches in length, 21 and a half inches in width with the wings extended, and 6 and a half inches in height. Speaking of the cockpit, it has some really great details inside. The scoping of the console with the red accents on it, the joystick on the right side, along with the other switches and buttons, the throttle, as well as the details on the pilot seat and the ejection handles, they are all very well done. The whole jet is done with an incredible amount of detail, and just like the His tank, it comes with a bunch of stickers that allow you to personalize it in many ways. It has stickers for Gung Ho, Snake Eyes, Shipwreck, and Ace. It also has various designs of the Wool Squad logo, that you can put on the vertical stabilizers. There are many great details found throughout the vehicle that really make it shine, such as the Gatling gun in the front, the panels, the vents, and the nozzles in the afterburners. Let's take a look at the vehicle from a couple of different angles. The only drawbacks on the Sky Striker for me is the canopy that doesn't close properly and the fact that we already have gotten quite a few of the new Sky Strikers. It's quite a large vehicle, 
so I can see why someone who already has one might pass up on this 50th anniversary version. But if you don't have a Sky Striker, then getting this one is totally worth it. The set came out in 2015, but it is still available on a few places such as Big Bad Toy Store for $60, which was the original retail price. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this two-part review of the G.I. Joe Silent Strike. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and also please make sure to subscribe. Stay tuned for more toy reviews on classic action figures. And until next time, take it easy.